Hi everyone, Charles here for MLB Papers. How are you doing? Last week, a young PhD student who just got started on his PhD journey asked me the following question. Is it better to choose an easy or a hard research project? Now that's a great question, even beyond PhD or even research. If you're doing an internship, for example, and you can choose the project you're working on, how big of a challenge should you tackle? Now, just before we get started, I would like to say a huge thank you to all of you watching this video. We're now a big family of more than a thousand enthusiasts sharing the same passion for machine learning, AI, and technology. That's just crazy. Thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why not do it and join the rest of us? This is completely free for you and that really helps the channel. Thank you so much. Let's jump in. Your first paper. Your objective is to produce top-notch research. And as a first step, you need to get your first paper published. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think that you are perfectly capable to produce high quality work. But if you want to get published, there are some non-technical requirements to satisfy. And no matter how good your work is, if it does not satisfy those requirements, it will never be accepted for publications. That's very frustrating, I know, but that's what it is. And getting to know those requirements, or at least some of them, is the first objective of publishing your first paper. The second objective is to get familiar with a new field that you never actually worked in. And the third objective, which may be the most important one from my perspective, is to give you confidence in your research skills. Now, I'm a firm believer that anyone can produce high quality research, and that's something that I say quite often on this channel. And not only me, but also many other researchers, like Amy Zhang and Arthur Gredon, whom I interviewed, link in the description. But your first published paper will probably boost your confidence even more than the words of Charlie and the Research Factory. Now, how do we pick the topic of our first paper? There are two options. Option number one, join an existing project. Maybe your PhD advisor has an idea of something that he or she would like to explore. Otherwise, you can join a group project with senior researchers. But either way, join forces with somebody who has experience in publishing and can show you the tricks of a trade. I would argue that this is the best way for you to get on track. Otherwise, you have option number two. When there is no project to join, you gotta make your own. Then I would advise you to go for something on the easier end. First, because things are always more complicating than they seem. And second, because you can always complexify things if need be. The expectation of your estimator is easy to bound? Then how about bounding it in high probability? Your algorithm has a good performance, but this seems trivial? Then can you reduce its time complexity without degrading its performance? And so on. But before making anything more difficult, you should ask for feedback, always and from anyone. Ask your supervisor, ask your lab members, show them what you do and ask them for their honest opinion. And ask them to explain why they think so. Not just good or bad that even a mute GPT could output, but instead what is good in your work? What's bad in your work? Why? How can you improve it? Say you want to publish your work at AI Stats. Ask them if that sounds adequate. And again, ask them why they think so. What makes the paper stand out? What is missing from the paper to be accepted at a top venue? Now, I know some of you are a little shy about saying they want to publish at a top venue, but don't be, everyone wants to. Nobody's going to blame you for that. And if they do, remember one thing, it's not arrogant to submit your work at a top venue. It's also not arrogant to judge whether or not a work is adequate for publication at a top venue. What is arrogant and false is to judge people negatively and tell them that they don't have the capabilities to do that. Finally, you ask people for feedback. Don't hesitate to do the extra step and ask them if they want to join you and work with you. Research is like basketball. It works better as a team. Your second, third papers. You got your first paper out. Congratulations. And most importantly, you start to understand how research actually works. You can then move on to paper number two, and then paper number three, paper number four. Okay, I stop it. And now you have two options, but those are different from the ones you had for paper number one. Option number one, you can continue on the same research topic. With your first paper in the field, you're now an expert. And therefore, as an expert, it is time to raise the bar. That means to go for more difficult research questions and try to solve them. Now, solving a problem does not necessarily mean solving them completely. For the more consistent research problems, advancing by a few steps towards a solution is already amazing. Option number two, you can work on a totally different topic. Of course, you should not pick a new topic for every new paper that you write, but you can definitely do it sometimes. And yes, it will take more time and more effort than option number one, but you're going to learn so much. That's something that I personally do. I work in the field of bandits, and during my PhD, I had a chance to work on fact-based bounds. 
and it has genuinely given me a new dimension to my research, enabling me to make connections between those two topics. I am personally a huge proponent of that option, and this is why I initially launched this YouTube channel. I wanted to share with you how much this brought to me. And for that, I sometimes present research papers on a broad variety of topics within machine learning in an approachable way, so that you can also benefit from my research readings and make your research even more creative and innovative. Finally, I want to mention one thing, especially if you choose to work on the same topic. Same topic does not mean same method or solutions. On the contrary, using methods from other fields is going to make your research creative and inspiring. Now, if your previous method does work, there's nothing wrong in reusing it. But please, don't just try to force it in every single one of your papers. Science is about bringing new solutions to existing problems, not about finding new problems to recycle your old solutions. Let's keep that in mind and think different. No, no wait, that's a brand slogan. Your later papers. With the experience of one or two papers, you should start considering doing several projects at a time. Right now, here's what I do one or two difficult research projects. I love challenges and those make me want to get up in the morning to learn new things, make scientific discoveries and change the world or at least the reading materials of a subset of people living in the microcosm of my research community. And one or two group projects. Those help me to connect with other researchers and as a byproduct to talk with other human beings. Those projects can be hard or easy, but if they're hard, I try to split the effort with my teammates. Some people would tell you that it is more efficient to focus on just one project. I disagree. I think that we are more efficient than we think, and unless the task you're taking on is a big chunky one, if you only take one, you might be under revving, eventually degrading your productivity. But there is no single right answer for everyone, and I think that you should just try it out and see if it works for you. Quality over quantity. Probably I could grossly summarize today's video by saying, keep challenging yourself. When you are releasing your first paper, learning how to do research is a challenge. When you're releasing your second paper, doing something difficult is your new challenge. And overall, my advice is to go for the more difficult route in general and to focus on quality rather than quantity. Now, especially in machine learning, that's no secret that many people are only interested in publishing papers in top venues, even if those are not useful and sometimes not even scientifically correct. Now, besides the obvious environmental and ethical issues of doing that, I am personally doing research out of passion. I am passionate about producing things that are going to help others and push the boundaries of science. And maybe even more than that, I have the passion to share what I know with you, and this is what I do here on YouTube. That's my purpose, and that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I would really appreciate that. Also, don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel for more or less technical content. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.